the Data Science channel. This is our second video in our Kedro series, where we're going to review the Kedro project. In our first video, we checked a short introduction to Kedro and how we built a Hello World example using Kedro. In this second video, we'll look at Kedro projects, how you would create a project using Kedro, and also we're going to review the Kedro starters which are essentially templates that we can use to create Kedro projects. Um, so first thing that we might need to know about Kedro projects is that we can create them either interactively through the command line or we can create them using a configuration file. In order to create a new project, we can do this through several methods, either interactively or we can use a configuration file. When we want to create a new project interactively, essentially what we want to do is to type the kedro new command in our terminal. Whenever we are doing this, we have to provide the following options. Project name, which is a human readable name for our project. Repository name, which is essentially the directory that holds your project repository. And Python package, a name for the Python package name in your project. And it always has to be short in all lower case. So this would be the interactive approach to creating a new project. The second approach to creating a new project using Kedro is using a configuration file. Whenever we choose this approach, we essentially need to provide pretty much the same variables we provide for the interactive approach. That is the project name, the repository name, the Python package, but also we need to provide the output directory which is the path in which to create the project directory. The output directory can be set wherever you want to create the project. For example, tilde for your home directory, dot for the current working directory. Here's an example of config YAML. So this is the type of configuration we would normally create in order to create a project using Kedro. Output directory, tilde code, project name, get started, repo name, get started, Python package get started. To create a new project using this approach, we essentially have to use the command kedro new and we have to pass the option with the name of the configuration file, so config.yaml. As you can see, we are still using the kedro new command pretty much in the same manner we have used it in the interactive approach, but in this case, uh, we have to specify the configuration file as an um, option, while in the previous approach, we have to provide each individual option one by one for the interactive um, terminal. And finally, we have to initialize a Git repository. Kedro starters are templates for typical Kedro projects. In a Kedro project, you have boilerplate code and configuration that can be reused from project to project. Kedro starters are based on the cookie cutter templates from the popular cookie cutter package. Projects based on Kedro starters are created using the same Kedro new command. The main difference is that we need to pass the name of the Kedro starter that we want to use, such as Kedro new starter equal PySpark. When building a new project, using a starter, we still have two approaches. The same two approaches we showed in the previous section. That is, we have the interactive approach where we can simply pass each individual variable one at a time, but we also have the configuration file based approach where we essentially populate the configuration file with all the options available. And then we pass the name of the configuration file as a parameter in the command line. Last but not least, the Kedro team maintains a set of starters. If we want to list all the starters available, we simply use the command kedro starter list, and that will display all the starters available for our Kedro project. Let's review a way of using Kedro starters. In particular, let's use the Iris dataset Kedro starter in order to create the Kedro project. So if you're not familiar with the Iris dataset, it's one of the, actually one of the most popular datasets within data science that was collected 
1936 by British statistician Roland Fisher, and it contains 150 samples of various pictures of iris plant, in particular three different species of iris, iris setosa, versicolor, and virginica. In order to create this project, we'll have to use this command get renew, and we also have to pass the name of the starter, that is pandas iris. Started. Getting started. Getting underscore started. All right, so now we managed to create all the files for our project. So let's just walk through each one of the files and each one of the individual uh, directories so uh, for example we have our initial um, our initial getting started uh, folder which is essentially the parent directory of this entire iris dataset template then we also have a conf directory which is essentially um, our uh, configuration directory. So you have a readme here that explains what, what is the purpose for this particular directory. Um, and you have two individual subfolders, uh, base that contains uh, essentially um, the type of information that you'd want to use in multiple projects. Uh, and it also includes uh, usually non-sensitive data. Um, and you also have the local subdirectory where you usually put your uh, credentials, um, say, for example, AWS uh, credentials for access or AWS secrets, usernames, passwords for your databases, um, and so on and so forth. So this would be the conf directory uh, then we have a data directory, which um, essentially is used for uh, um, storing uh, storing the data if you want to, to store it uh, uh, if you want to store it locally. Um, this particular folder is usually not committed to version control, um, obviously because, for example, in most cases uh, the data sets that you use in a data science projects are too big, anyways so you'd want to keep them somewhere else but you still have to track them and also when you're working locally you still want to have some kind of access to them uh, you might have noticed that we have eight different folders here uh, and you might also notice the fact that um, as we move from our first folder to the last one we usually go from raw data to intermediate to primary to feature uh, data, model input, models, model output, and reporting. So what is this? It kind of looks uh, uh, like we have the whole um, the whole data science project lifecycle. Um, and there is basically a model uh, within Kedro uh, called the data engineering model that we're going to cover in one of our future videos. But essentially, this whole data folder follows this, uh, this model. And essentially, we have a specific directory for each type of data that we want to process. So we have raw data, then we have intermediate, and so on and so forth until we uh, hit the, the reporting stage. So this would be our data folder. Now let's go to the documentation, to the docs folder. And essentially, this is where we normally keep uh, our project documentation pretty straightforward we have a com file and an index file uh, we have our logs folder where uh, we would want to keep our project output logs 
Uh, and again, very important, this file is not committed to version control. Uh, the same as uh, the data folder. Then we also have a um, subdirectory for notebooks where we keep our Jupyter notebooks uh, and usually we would use these for uh, experimental code before moving uh, our code to uh, production. And we have our uh, production uh, folder, uh, SRC from source. And here is where we would keep uh, the bulk of our uh, productionizable, uh, productionizable code. Um, so within this, we have uh, um, our uh, uh, the name of our package. So we have getting started. Again, if you named your project in a different manner, you'll, it'll be it'll have a different name. Um, then we have a folder for tests, and uh, also uh, we have a requirements txt file that contains um, essentially uh, the main. Uh, folders uh, the main the main packages that are required uh, and a setup um, setup.py file for um, for testing purposes um, what else do we have we have a git ignore for um, essentially uh, telling version control which types of uh, folders or files to ignore for example, here you see uh, that we are ignoring the data and the logs folder. Essentially, all the files within these two different uh, uh, two different folders. We have a few common files for IntelliJ, for macOS. Um, so again, uh, quite a lot of uh, boilerplate stuff that you normally want to reuse from project to project. What else do we have here? Well, we have a readme for the entire uh, for the entire project. So these are the files within our template. Now let's try to run the project. So we are in the getting started folder. Let's copy the Kedroy install command. Let's run it. Kedro install. So we have the requirements over here. It should take a while. I'm gonna come back once it's done. As we have all our packages installed. Let's run Kedro. Run. Yes. So when this command completes, you should be able to see a log message similar to the to something like um, something like this. Just so something like this. Um, let me see. Seems to be all right. Yes, completed four out of four. Pipeline execution completed successfully. So now that our run was successful, let's look within our source get started pipelines folder. As you can see, we have two subfolders within this particular folder. We have a data engineering folder and we have a data science folder. So um, we have when within each one of them we have a pipeline.py file. So <clears throat> what are these pipeline files for? So the data data engineering pipeline 
is responsible for splitting splitting the data into training and testing samples as you can see as you can see here we have we're using essentially Kedro Kedro pipelines and Kedro nodes um, pretty much in a similar fashion as we've seen in our first tutorial for this series uh, and we also have a data science pipeline and within the data science pipeline uh, we are pretty much responsible for model training predictions and accuracy reporting so as you can see we have model training a node for predicting and a node for uh, reporting accuracy Uh, within both of these folders, we also have a notice.py file, as you can see here. So for the data engineering node, we have uh, these functions over here. Uh, so this function for splitting the data, as you can see, we're receiving the data as a data frame. And we also get a float value, which is essentially the ratio between uh, uh, the, the test uh, train test split um, so this is where we are doing our uh, split between training and testing data uh, now let's look at the notes.py file in our data science folder so over here we are essentially have a function for training the model that gets the data as a data frame uh, gets the labels as a data frame and a set of additional parameters. We also have a function for predicting results, um, which is essentially we're getting the model, we're getting uh, the test uh, values as a data frame. Uh, we have a function for reporting accuracy as well. So this would be the two uh, pipeline folders. The thing I wanted to review for this project is the pipeline registry that is available within SRC getting started. Um, so what is the role of the pipeline registry? Well, the pipeline registry creates and collates uh, the project's modular pipelines uh, in a single pipeline, uh, resolving node execution order, from the input and output data dependencies and between the nodes. So essentially we have our data engineering pipeline, our data science pipeline, and essentially we collate these two together into one single pipeline uh, for the entire project. Uh, and yes, this is uh, essentially our um, Iris dataset Kedro project using Kedro starters. This was the second video about Kedro within our series. If you want to learn more about Kedro or if you want to learn more about data science in general, make sure to follow our channel, the data science channel on YouTube. Also, if you liked our video, make sure to smash that like button. Thank you very much.